Adventurers, welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. This is your host Tom, or Robots, and I'm here with my good buddy Lotus. And today we're talking about Almalexia. The uh, I, probably Lotus. I feel like Almalexia is one of the like of the three tribunal. She's the one that gets the least attention. Do you feel like that? <sighs> Well, sort of. She's she might not get the least attention. She gets a lot of attention in game, much less attention in people discussing the game. If that makes sense, that might be it. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Because everybody talks about Vivek because Vivek's a total mess, and then everybody <laughs> thinks so. The Sills were super cool and aloof and and weird and <laughs> and then you know philosophical and all that. And then Almalexia yeah. is like, yeah, yeah. And then there's Almalexia. Like that, se- that right. seems to be the general discussion. But I want to start with her because we've been talking about Morrowind. We've been talking about the Dunmer and I feel like she gets a short shrift in the well, community, especially because in game, she's very influential. We can get into it in a second. But mm-hmm. like the, the term Mother Morrowind will come up quite frequently because like the Dunmer love her. Right. Like yeah. it, it's really, really important. And she is much more involved with a lot of the day to day dealings in game. Whereas you mentioned Sothasil, a little aloof. We'll get into that with his episode. Vivek, yeah, okay. Keeping Bardow from making everybody go squish. But at the same time, like <laughs> yeah. kind of just sitting in his, you know, canton hovering in place glowing yeah uh, and being all about himself yeah being all about it like he's he's like the epitome of the like i'm gonna say something because it makes me sound smart right kind of guys yeah Yeah, like the thing i said is is super smart aren't i so smart like that's the feeling i get from vivek whereas at least on on (laughs) we'll get we'll get into it later throughout her her lifespan but overtly she's definitely much more of the people um Mm -hmm. you know and and Mm -hmm. wants to be like no no i'm gonna do good things for you and you you'll love me because i want to help you and i want to make your lives better and stuff like that and we'll get into exactly whether it's vain or not and if there's actually like a lot more to it than just sure i actually care about you you know having better lives or i just really want you to love me type of deal right um right but yeah in game i feel like she's the most connected but to your point out of game she seems like the least talked about of the three more often than not yeah so okay so what this episode is not about because it stands alone is the events of Red Mountain and the events of tapping into the heart of Lorcan and Dagoth yeah. Ur or any not of, getting into why not, they may or may not actually be like divine. <laughs> yeah, we're not getting into the origins of that and we're not getting into the end of the story, the, the events of Morrowind 3 so much as this is more of a character uh, study. We're, we're taking a look at her and her her life and more specifically like her as the deity that is being worshipped and what she's about. Right. So here, let's start this off because we're again, we're pulling from the UESP and at the beginning we've got a nice summary of all the different titles that, that she's given. And this is going to feel a lot like one of our Daedric Prince episodes, I think. Yep. So Amalexia, also known as Amalexia the Lover, Amalexia the Warden, A.M. and one of the three god kings who constitute the tribunal or Alm Sivi. That's a it's like a combination of each of their names. It's yeah, it's it's Alm Alexia. Uh, what, yeah. What, what's that an acronym? Vivek. Is that, is yeah. that the word for that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's like a little an, more elaborate because it's multiple letters. It's not just mm-hmm. a single one, but yeah, is it still an acronym? I'm not sure I, if you use multiple, if that classifies as something different i don't think it does i think it's probably its own thing but it's similar yeah. in concept so yeah she's along with vivek and so um and she's very popular with the dunmer who call her healing mother or lady of mercy or mother morrowind like you mentioned yep and they know her as a source of compassion and sympathy and forgiveness protector of the poor and weak and the patron of teachers and healers so all good right like that sounds great she sounds she sounds great she sounds perfect like who doesn't want a compassionate godlike mother deity being looking over you and your people yep just just i i mean she hovers too so i mean just hovering there <laughs> being around. awesome making sure you don't all fall apart at the seams yeah um yeah. That, that seems pretty good especially just being like 
in one of your capital cities, it's just like, oh, yeah, let's go just hang out and see God. She's just chilling right over there. She's chilling over there, <laughs> over in Mournhold. That's, that's where she hangs out. Yeah, yep. right. It's so, like that's that's a, that's a pretty interesting, and, and it's a situation that Dunmer kind of sort of have a little more than the others. It's They, they have a very tangible connection to a couple of their deities. It's just, you can literally reach out and touch them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And so she hangs out in Mournhold. Uh, she's closely associated with the House Indoril, which we talked about previously. And um, she's also known as being the most personable of the tribunal. And she's often seen walking among her people. So she doesn't just float there like Vivek. And she's not yep. off in some clockwork city. Uh, I feel like the clockwork city is like Sothisil's like train set. Yeah. You know, oh, like yeah. that's the, yeah. like his little modeling project, you know, like where yeah. he don't touch my stuff. I'm playing with it right now. And you'll, you'll, you'll mess up the track and then it won't run. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Leave myself alone. Go do your own thing. I don't care. Move on, move on. Right. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, but she, she walks among the people and, um, in the beginning of her story, which we, I, like I mentioned again at the beginning, we're not going to go into a lot of de- detail. She was the wife of Indo, Indo- Indo- Nerevar way yep. back in the day. And she was a counselor of Resdane. And when the events of all that stuff went on, that's pretty shrouded in like mystery and antiquity at this point, because you have to go way back in time. And uh, basically it comes down to she and the rest of the tribunal promised not to use the tools of Kagranak on the heart of Lorcan. And lo and behold, Spoiler. Boom. She does. <laughs> Somehow they all become gods, right? It's weird. It's how did they all get that god power? How did they well, all get that god power? Well, they like to and say. And why is everybody else cursed? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> they like to say that it was due to their, their, um, the, the nature of them being such good and, and awesome people that they, they were so helpful. They were they, right. gifted divinity. They were um, gifted divinity. Which is interesting because on uh the the joking curse aspect the aesthetic to them the dunmark you know all being um ashen skinned and like the grayish blue color Mm -hmm. um the tribunal all has a unique twist on that amalexa being very different as she actually um still looks like a chimer like she has golden skin. She didn't take that ashen curse, which makes her very unique looking when you think of like, oh, she's she's devoid of that curse type of thing. Right. She has the kind of golden copper kind of hue. Right. Um, the other half of Vivek, which you'll see a lot of times since right. he's like 50 50. Right. She, she's the gold part of that. Right. That's her in her entirety, which is interesting because you don't really see any Dunmer that still look like Keimer. Like that's, that's right. a thing of the past, except for her, except for her and half of Vivek. Uh, so the still took on the, the Dunmer kind of ashen skin. Uh, right. Right. And so the still went all ashen skin. <laughs> right. Right. So if you add them all up half of the tribunal, because you have one and a half exactly. of them are Keimer and one and yep. a half of them are Dunmer. Right. Which is which is kind of interesting. So it, it is interesting. Also, before we get too far from it, because it, uh, actually it was looked up in chat and mm-hmm. Inert shouted it out. <laughs> that that thing we were like, is there a different name? Because it's not quite an acronym. <laughs> uh, apparently, it's an amalgamated name. Well, that makes what sense. The, what the term is. Yeah. So ju- just for anybody else who was curious or feverishly like trying to wikipedia while driving and listening to this don't do that <laughs> don't that's do that what it's called <laughs> you focus on driving please <laughs> please be safe <laughs> we don't need to be responsible for anybody going to the hospital um but anyways yes but back anyways, to Alex, yeah. yeah yeah so it's going back to the whole uh, origin story thing the only reason i bring that up a little bit and again we're not going into detail there is because there is a certain level from the beginning of deception and shadiness going on here there yeah. is a certain amount of, well, they they probably did it for their own benefit. And now that they have these powers, they are taking on this role of being a god of these people. Right. But there was also the curse. There was also the post justification of them being anticipations or the 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 daedric princes being anticipations of them because they were always going to be coming from those anticipated versions into themselves that kind of thing right um so 
that being said, there's a little bit of like, yeah, she does all these good things. People know her for being good and compassionate, but she's still carrying around a big lie <laughs> in order to maintain that. Right. It's it's not like she got that from totally being just this benevolent, like, oh, you are so cool. We'll just give you super god powers. It's right. Not how that works and it's not how the tribunal wants i i mean that's what the tribunal would like everyone to think but there's a lot of evidence that shows that that is not how that works whatsoever right right so so i mean that's that's pretty much it when you get to the concept of like the extent of her powers and things i don't i personally here don't have a firm sense of where those boundaries actually are and I don't feel like we get a clear sense of that in the games. It's we get it. We get a sense that like she gained her power from the heart of Lorcan, just like the rest of the tribunal. And yep. every so often they have to go regain their power or refill up their batteries. Yep. Sort of kind of yeah, thing. Go on their little pilgrimage. Go on their little pilgrimage. But they are not all powerful gods they're not gods with a capital g who can do anything they want they're and are more boundless of a demigod type of thing within the series where they have above normal levels of you know strength and magical ability and all this stuff but they're not just these i mean even comparatively there's you know they they can make some interesting scenarios with daedric princes which happens in the story so it's like they're they're their level of understanding and strength and power and stuff like that definitely rivals some very strong entities type of deal. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's much more fallible than just like, this is how you were created. It's more of a, you gained this power is, is kind of how the series has always been because there are several storylines, uh, you know, where, where, it's be, it's being messed with like their their absolute power is not so absolute like there are things that screw with it and it, you know what once we get to her final days because spoiler sh she's not alive like so <laughs> yeah yeah in in the fourth era of, <laughs> right. of the world like, she's no longer around she she's not there anymore like the the tribunal is not this lasting entity that was unstoppable like that they had a finite end in the end. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's let's get into some of the details about some of the things that she's done historically. Yep. Um, we have a section here in the in the UESP. Um, and thank you for the follow. And, and those of you who are in the live stream, thank you for being here. For some reason, my sound setup is weird. So those sounds are going to come across a little bit louder than they normally do on the recording. <laughs> so if you hear weird stream stuff, that's what's going on. Um, so we, we have like we go back to the time of her taking on this power and moving forward in time. And then you have, for example, in the first era, 2920, Mayrun's Dagon destroyed the city of Mournhold. Wonderful, right? Mm -hmm. Mayrun's Dagon it's decides... What, it's what Dagon does. He's going to go destroy something. He picks her city. Um, after an epic battle, he was defeated by Amalexia and Th Sothasil. So this, to your point, is gives us a sense of their power. The two yeah. of them together could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mayrun's Dagon and his forces. Right. That's, you know, that, that, that's and that's that's a that's essentially a God that was created that way more so than, you know, in the implication that they they kind of took their power. This is just like Dagon has been around for he's so fundamental. Long. We talked about him. Exactly. He's, he seems to be one of the oldest beings in existence. Exactly. So, you know, the, having the strength of that, that's usually quite a sign of strength when you can, you know, hold your own against something quite as over the top as someone like Mayrin's Dagon, who's not even like a slouch of a Daedric Prince. Like that's one of the higher end Daedric Princes in yeah. terms of power. So. Yeah. so the assumption here is that this is a true story, of course things get kind of recast as time goes by and there's not anybody around anymore to remember what actually happened and sure. these people being potentially eternal in their lifespan uh, have the benefit of being able to recast history through generations of people who don't live through that same time period as long as they do so yep. Uh, is probably accurate but then again maybe there's some maybe there's some fiction around it we have another event and i'm going to read this whole section it's during the second era 572 so getting close to the time of eso 
Um, Amalexia fought alongside Wolfharth, also known as the Underking. We needed to do an episode about the Underking and Wolfharth. We're going way back to like like weird connections with like names of characters that get lumped in with other characters and eventually become the same character throughout yeah, the evolution say, of the series. I, I'm actually kind of uh, experiencing that playing Daggerfall with the under King and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, these are some characters dating back to some old games as well. So, right, right. So, uh, against, uh, I'm going to mess up these names. Ada Sum Dur Kamal during the Akaviri invasion of Northern Tamriel. Akaviri was the, the, uh, the landmass off to the east of Tamriel. Yes. And that's, at one point they were invaded. The Akaviri actually took residence in Tamriel, kind of conquered some areas and, and yada, yada, yada. Um, sources seem to disagree on certain aspects of this conflict. Mysterious Akavir, this is one of the books in the games, treats Morrowind as the target of the Akaviri invasion, though Skyrim was apparently the Akaviri's initial target. The Arcturian heresy claims Almalexia was the one who summoned the Underking to fight alongside the tribunal which seems super shady because the under king is kind of a an evil bad guy Mm -hmm. even though in life he had been one of their greatest enemies yorin the scald king contradicts this crediting the graybeards with summoning the ash king the book also claims that dur kamal's army was crushed by several tamrielic military forces not just the dunmer army under amalexia's command and that this occurred at a place called stonefalls the other sources do not mention the nordic or argonian forces which played roles and mysterious akavir says dur kamal was defeated at red mountain so this is one of those things that happens we have this this what seems like a real event because we have aspects of history moving forward that show that the akaviri were actually in tamriel they they did things they were some of them served the empire there's a the right. whole you got you yeah i was gonna say uh, this was an Ak- akaviri potentate that was right. you know it in a position of leading the empire for quite a while at points so. right so we know the akaviri invaded we know they came over but the specific details here of almalexia's relationship to the under king or were did it have something to do with the the nords were the nords and the argonians involved did it happen at stone falls did it happen at uh that other location i mentioned which which I can't find in the text all of a sudden um, red mountain. Like, well, do we know? We don't know. We, we have a lot of conflicting sources and right. there's a lot of people who would benefit from casting from gaslighting history. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I need to take credit for this because it makes my importance seem much, much more. Um, and, and you know, it's all the same region. So it doesn't even seem like it's necessary. Like, they're kind of fighting over the exacts of like, well, where exactly did this happen Mm -hmm. so that I can scoop up some of the, some kudos, please, as opposed to, you know, oh yeah, it happened here. And these people were involved. Everybody's kind of scrambling for their piece of the, you know, heroic glory pie here. So it's like, you know, you don't want to let other people take too much credit, even if they did more than you did. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, right. The next paragraph goes on and says, following the Akaviri invasion, Amalexia was a strong supporter of the formation of the Ebonheart Pact. This is this is a phrase. This is a term that you guys will recognize if you play ESO. The Ebonheart yep. Pact, Amalexia maybe came up with the idea or at least very much supported it. It was she who convinced the great houses, Sans the Telvani, who we've talked about, to join the pact. During the Alliance War of the Second Era 582, Deshaun was threatened by a cult known as the Malborn, who sought to topple the tribunal and return the Dunmer to Daedra worship. They were led by Magistrix Eurelie. You really? You really Vox? Y- yeah, you really Vox, I think. Mm-hmm. Once a handmaiden of Almalexia who turned against her following her son's execution. The insurgents were ultimately put down. So she did have a hand in uniting all of these people, which yep. uh, sounds again, sounds like a good thing. Yeah, that was actually a series of events that happens in game as well. You had referenced, you know, it being ESO. If you play the Ebonheart Pact storyline uh, and are in the whole region of the stone falls and Deshaun, which is in Morrowind. Um, that's the, that's the situation that you actually deal with. This is what takes place during the events of ESO that you're just talking about. Right. Right. So she, she plays a big role with her people. She's, she's very involved with them. You can see why 
they would love her for being supportive for going to war for them all of these kinds of things and and she's regularly showing her power so right. it's kind of hard to deny a living god among you who's showing such great strength yep. that doesn't deserve worship when, when, when she takes care of you so exactly so, yeah but here's what we're going to do we're going to skip over the dagath earth stuff the events at the end of morrowind we can cover that in a separate episode because that deserves its own episode and we're going to talk coming up after the break about her death continued worship because the there are some people out, there are some people out there that are still worshiping her and uh your favorite thing she's got her own artifacts just like uh daedric prince she sure does so we'll be right back don't go anywhere this is a mishmorak dragonborn and you are educating yourself to the Elder Scrolls lore cast. Oh, thank you, Hermie. All right, here we are in the middle of the show. This is where we get to thank our new patrons and welcome them on board. We have a bunch of new ones that have signed up in the last week. And uh, I need to make sure that I get all of them here because I, I don't always remember exactly who I called out last. Um, I don't remember if we called out Annie E, but welcome Annie E, Kelsey L, AMR198, uh, Daniel, Maddie, Lexit again. <laughs> Alex H and Rhett N. Welcome to the Patreon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And big shout out to all 118 of you. Wow. Thank you so much for your support. Very, very much appreciated. And our three Daedric Princes, Evelyn R, Kira C, and Noodle Al Dente, who sign up at tier five and get shout outs every week. Thank you to you guys as well. Um, wow, guys. Uh, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for supporting the show. This allows me to do this for a living, and I really do appreciate it. Um, we also normally have some reviews. We don't have any new ones this week. So if you'd like to leave a five star rating and a review on Apple Podcasts, I'll read it out on a future episode of the show or you can leave us ratings on spotify if you listen on there um, those are both wonderful ways to help out and uh i think that's it for the middle of the show so we need to go Sounds talk good. talk more about Amalexia. here we go you're listening to the elder scrolls lore cast dear child of cities that is why the night mother loves you all right, here we are. We're back. I mean, there was one other thing I wanted to mention. Currently, right now, and for the rest of the month, uh, I've, I've set up some new stuff on the website, on the store, and I've moved our shirts store from the company I used to use to a new company because it's a lot cheaper because that other company raised their prices and it was getting kind of crazy. So I moved to a different, a different company, lowered the prices, and for the rest of the month, all of the shirts on the store are 20% off your entire order. You can order as many as you want. So if you want to get a uh, <laughs> Hermes Mora shirt off the store, <laughs> go for it. Um, I've Always, reduced why the, not Hermes Mora? Why not Hermes Mora? Um, I've reduced the inventory, <laughs> so it's just that everyone's favorite shirts, but I've added some new ones. Like there's one of my cartoon face saying words is hard. So <laughs> I saw that one. <laughs> so if you want to get that or any of the other shirts that support any of the other shows I do, uh, go go check it out. I've basically reduced everything to the point where I'm not really making any profit at all. I just wanted to put them on sale for people who have been kind of waiting and wanting to grab one. So there you go and enjoy them. I hope you guys enjoy them. All right, let's move on with the rest of the discussion about Amalexia. We have um, you want to talk about her death? Yeah, let's talk about her death. Yeah. Then why don't you present this? You you seem right. more familiar with this than I. Well, well you're, so you, you're more of a Morrowind guy than I am. I, I, I am. And th this is, you know, we, we might I might need to correct a few things just uh, by referencing the wiki or UESP itself. Sure. No to problem. Make sure my memory holds. Right. Um, but the, the interesting thing about her death is it's the ultimate situation of um sort of ultimate power corrupts absolute or what is it absolute power corrupts absolutely i think is the is the yeah, is the something phrase like that. yeah where her obsession with her own power and and all of this basically in the end drives her completely insane yeah um yeah which it doesn't 
just take her out. This actually kind of involves a spoiler for for another uh, <laughs> the tribunal because she murders Sothasil on the way out. Uh, mm-hmm. So, <sighs> and, and this is like a very real thing that happens. Like if you take humans and you put them in a place, not just of power, but a place where they have power or they have comfort or they have, for example, if you, if you are given a job where you make a lot of money and you don't have to really do a whole lot, there's a psychological thing that happens where you feel like you have to keep holding up the right to be there. Does that make sense? And so right. you you start you and you don't act you deep down you know you don't actually deserve to be there. You don't actually have the skills needed or or the authority or whatever. And so it eats at you from the inside. Just because other people believe it of you doesn't mean that if you know it's not true, you, you feel like a phony. You feel like someone's going to find you out at some point and then everything's going to topple down. So it has this like psychological effect. I feel like this is kind of the uh, God equivalent <laughs> right. of that. It, 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 pretty much because like basically as time had, had gone on, she she had changed and she became much more. It was much less. We, we've had a, what was it? The Lady of Mercy, I believe was one of her names mm-hmm. where now she's kind of chucked that out the window. And now it's like it's warrior time. Like I need to be the most loved, the most respected. I need to basically be forcibly become mother morrowind at the expense of everybody else like everyone needs to love me the most it's like a Which, galadriel if she takes on the ring of power kind right, of right, situation right. so so that's just it so she you know this is where she kind of went crazy like she she went mad um and actually the thing that i wanted to specifically do because i i was trying to remember exactly how the events played out but basically during the events of elder scrolls 3 morrowind and after the game uh because there's an expansion uh tribunal um that's where you get a little more of this so just as a quick little Aside here, when the Nerevarine came to Mornhold after Dagathar's fall in 3E427, which is the events of the Elder Scrolls through Morrowind, Almalexia was determined to basically just like trap him, get, Take get him, him under, right. him or her under Amalexia's control, uh, off the Nerevarine if need be. Um, and that's where she turned on Sotha Sill and s- basically just murders him in his own clockwork city and tries to use all of his creations to run amok above ground, <laughs> which is like, these are supposed to be your people. Like, right, right. And so it's much a, for protecting everybody all of a sudden. Yeah. And, and it was in order to frame him to make it look like it was something he did. And Correct. she was justified in his murder. It, exactly. So so this is the thing where it's like it suddenly wasn't about this benevolent thought. It was just like, how can I make everyone love me the most? Oh, I know. So is a traitor. Look what he did to you. Isn't mm-hmm. it good that I killed him? And it's like, right. Okay, that's uh, we see echoes of this in in the political landscape today in our own world where certain politicians will purposely put through legislation that they know is going to be harmful to their own constituents. And then they will claim that the reason everyone is suffering is because of things the other party did. And that's why you need to elect them again. It's the same kind of thing. Right. And during this whole thing, she basically throughout the quest line is she'll lure you to the clockwork city as you play the Nerevarian and your job is to to mess her up more or less and finish her off uh stop this chaos that's going on and uh that you know kind of off her mm-hmm. so that nobody needs to to deal more with Amalexia and the crazies right. um, so so she is uh, as just off the top of my head right here, this is one some wasn't one of the things I thought about earlier on yep. when we were doing research. Uh, she is one of the only oh, she's one of two godlike beings. I guess it depends on how you classify godlike being. She's one of a, only a handful of godlike beings that you as the player get to destroy. Actually yes. destroy in a game. There's her. There's 
uh, Sheogorath, which I think you mantle. I don't know if it's an actual right. destroy. Right, I don't know how you would classify that, but I mean, I guess you could consider Jigalag because that's who you J- defeat. You defeat Jigalag, mantle. but I mean, he doesn't literally. He doesn't go away. He just disappears until the next age. Right. Uh, but then you mantle Sheogorath, which is kind of destruction of who Sheogorath was originally and is now you. Sure. Sort of. Uh, and then there's like Alduin. If you want to consider Alduin Alduin. a godlike being when he's close. Um, Right. But other than that, I think that's it. Right? Yeah, because most of the time you're working with them. I mean, in ESO, your your vestige definitely does, although you don't really kill any of like. I mean, you stand up against. You fight back Molag Ball. You fight back Dagon. But again, it's kind of this cyclical thing of you, you never really kill a Daedric Prince. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, you defeat. Yeah, Rob in, in chat says you defeat Mayroon's Dagon like three times, but you don't actually destroy him. I'm talking right, about destroy. Like the character is Oblivion. gone. Yeah, in like Oblivion. You, Oblivion. De- you defeat him and push him back, right? Right. Yeah. And you do that in, in the gates of Oblivion. <laughs> right. In, in ESO and and the, the soul burst or the vestige quest line um, in, in ESO. It, the, the focus is around Molag Ball. Well, you don't kill Molag Ball because he's still there. Yeah, he's eternal. He just goes away for a while and he comes back. You kind of back so that they have to reform. Because yeah. Daedra reform, and I think it's to a lesser, well, a greater extent, a less amount of agony, it seems like, for them to <laughs> reconstruct. <laughs> right, um, right. But I think, I think like, uh, to, the, to the point here, I think she's one of only a few. She's one of only a few that you right. as a player character kill. So her story ends with you as the player character ending her. Which is novel. It's very unique. It's kind of, I, I don't know, it's one of those things that I find really kind of fun and interesting because you don't get too much closer to the events of these games and playing them yourself as something like that. Like you as the main character push this forward and make it happen, right? Yeah, exactly. And and I mean, it is literally not even so much an option if you intend to do the quest. Like this is this is one of the few events that is assumed to have happened based on the fact that you would have played that. Right, uh, right. And some, some of the ones you can technically beat the crap out of Vivek, but it's ambiguous. It's not like, part of the it's it, not part it's, of the canon. It's just the, one of the, the things canon that you is can up do for debate. He's he's not there. Nobody knows right. what happens to Vivek, right. which we'll get into more so in the Vivek thing. Right. But it, it's it's not conclusive. It is conclusive. Sothasil done for. I'm Alexia done for, and you. You did, it. Like, <laughs> you, do you it. did it right um, right yeah and manny marco uh the under king if, if they are in fact the same person uh right there's questions about that is that is that of the same god status and manny marco right. I guess, technically becomes, becomes a, a god little god momentarily momentarily yeah, go, is that of right? the same set like this is another one of the ones that popped in my head and i was like is this really so thanks for for bringing that up Rob. yeah that that's um, another one that's kind of like an interesting like well i guess you could make that point but um yeah but yeah so so it it it's interesting because because, um, you know, so, so uh, that's pretty much the synopsis of her untimely demise. Right. Um, so she's gone, but, but then there are people who still worship her. Right. And it's weird because before we pull too far away and we'll get into like the worshiping thing, one of the things that I've just found very odd is she was married to Indril Nerevar, which mm-hmm. <laughs> becomes the second coming when you're the never nerevarine like it, right. it, so 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 like and she was part ultimate, of the reason why he dies right so he, you get then, the ultimate payback in the yeah. end but then it's also weird because after nerevar is defeated it's not even so much i mean michael kirkbride writes in a lot of ways that are very you know interpretive you've got to figure there was very little up for debate that like the tribunal were all just getting it on with each other all the time. So <laughs> it's also kind of weird. Yeah. That like she kills her husband and then it's just like, okay, well now I'm going to like, she very, she reminds me of a black widow in the end yeah. where it's just like, or, or a praying mantis. Those are the ones that eat the heads of the <laughs> shit. She's just going down the line of people that are just like, okay, well, you know what? You're next because you're you're too close to me. I need to eliminate you because this is a potential thing. And this is hindering other people's acknowledgement of how awesome I am. Right. Um, right. Which almost seems like maybe it magnified in the end to this this just lunatical degree that she had uh, right up till 
she she had to be put down <laughs> right right and uh, just to address rob in the, in the comments he says this backs up the point i hear from arimetheus all the time belief from followers doesn't ensure your godhood there's nothing right. inherently divine about being worshipped yes it's 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 like it's not a thing that ensures godhood but some godlike beings it benefit seems from worship like that helps it's, it's like in a cases. it's like a secondary th it seems like sometimes that helps or sometimes that is a uh, a goal in order to get more souls to their plane or whatever it's it's not something that works forward it's something that works backward if that if you think of it like well yeah and, you don't, and oftentimes <laughs> i don't know um, if i explain that well right but and also sometimes <laughs> i also wonder if if true like that you know th th there's like a correlation between levels of worship and you know some of the degree of strength maybe that they show i also wonder if like it shows a little bit of like okay is there actual divinity here or are you totally bs in everybody <laughs> right you're not right. like yeah. you know what i mean like it could actually explain more than they might want it to or or maybe not it's it's just an interesting idea yeah, yeah, and it's it's uh, another thing that you could be here, and this is all side stuff. Is that sure. the worship itself may not fill your power like a battery, like you're siphoning energy from your worshippers. I think a lot of people think of it that <laughs> Just way. Plug it in the worshippers. It, yeah, like it, it. Maybe some of the daedric beings have something about that, especially once they bring their souls into their plane or something like that. But I don't think that's the majority of it. If anything, having more people worship you simply gives you more power over more people. It's Ooh. it's as simple as that. Right. <laughs> like you, you have you more power have bigger, and influence. Bigger influence because mathematically you have an influence over more people. It's a like tautology. That, that's it math. is more people worship you. So therefore you have more people that you control. Therefore you have more power. It like right. it, it's, it can be as simple as that. And it probably exactly. is most of the time. Um, so that's just divinity math right there. <laughs> that's just divinity <laughs> math. So here, let's move on. Let's move on. We've got uh, the fourth era 201. The last vestiges of Amalexia's marks were gone from Mournhold. The Dunmer returned to their venerable or veneration of boethia right who were the anticipations and i love this mm -hmm. part now called one of the reclamations they have to justify with their own words that like oh these were in the anticipations of the tribunal and now the tribunal's not really here anymore so we're just reclaim we're just going back to the old ways yeah it's like okay well that didn't work sweep, sweep <laughs> the so, Amalexia sorry boethia the rug we're gonna worship you again yeah and yeah. uh and managed to make their way without their healing mother watching over them all Malexia is still remembered and honored as one of the greater saints of the dunmary faith so yeah although she didn't do some great things sometimes she did all she also did some good they things. kept her in high regard but bumped her right. down a peg in the divinity scale and you know try 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 to uh try to scrub the social media uh from the memo spores talking about her letting all the mechanical contraptions out to murder everybody right right and I, I love this final sentence in this paragraph but not one who was ever supposed to be one of the cornerstones of the religion so it seems like the majority of the dunmer at this point figure things out and they go yeah, yeah those guys kind of took the power for themselves yeah this like, wasn't okay maybe the ashlanders were on to something <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe they were onto something but despite the majority of the dunmer people turning away from amalexia worship the goddess was still revered by certain sects how freaking accurate is this with the way the world works like most right. people move on or most people learn something that is true guess what guys the earth is round it is a globe and yet there are still people out there who say nah it's flat <laughs> it's like yeah yeah no it's not <laughs> amalexia yeah. was never supposed to be a god the tribunal were not supposed to take that power they oh did it of their own accord there was no greater purpose going on right so yeah. yeah and i i mean not to unnecessarily dunk on people but i you know if you refuse if willfully staying ignorant is very different from being ignorant and just not having the knowledge there yet yes um and one of my favorite things based on the 
statement you just made about like people thinking the earth is flat. Um, one of my favorite things that I ever saw related to that was people from around the globe <laughs> right, are starting yes. to believe this. And I yes. think like, there is so much around wrong with this. the globe. You just named it a globe. Yes. I that's appreciate like appreciate you making the point of what Yeah, the globe it was like is. the description on the uh Flat World Society Twitter yeah. page or something like that says like and we're ex- we're expanding membership around the globe. Yeah. <laughs> it's like and I'm just like just great. Said Perfect. globe. Yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah. There's a hundred billion ways to prove that the earth is round. And there's a zero ba- ways to prove that it's flat. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the artifacts. <laughs> now we're very, very clearly off course here. All right. So there's two artifacts. I know this is one of your favorites. Do you want to cover it or should I? Um, I was going to say, well, I'll cover Hope's Fire just because I think this thing looks awesome. <laughs> cool. Yeah, let's do it. I, I actually have very little um, like I know these exist. But it's kind of funny. Like, I have no recollection of dealing with these uh, because I'm assuming they come uh, like I I think you see Hope's Fire if I'm not totally off base in Morrowind. I think it's in the expansion. Yeah, but I think it is. Yeah, Hope's Fire uh, or the Blade of Amalexia is a one-handed Dwemeri sword from the early first era. So this thing is super old as well, which is kind of neat. Made by the Um, Dwemer. Dwemeri. Exactly. Hope's Fire and its twin True Flame, also a really cool name, uh, represents uh, the pinnacle of Dwemeri craftsmanship. Uh, The twin blade possessed unearthly fire enchantments, which it's like, I, I don't know. The idea of like <laughs> unearthly fire enchantments is just kind of a funny way to put that. But it's like, it's, it, ma- it's magic. That's all it's it's like. It's magic. There's it's, lots of magic. It's <laughs> it's crazy magic. But um, all right. But yeah, they were presented at the wedding uh, gifts to Lord Indril Narvar and Amalexia by the uh, drummer King Dumak. Um, the thing that I like about it, and they, they actually have a great picture of it. Um, it, on the uh, UESP, I love the blue flame on it. That's why it's uh, otherworldly. That's unearth- oh, it's, unearthly. it's because it's blue flame. It's a blue yeah, flame. Let's see, there it is. Mm-hmm. And actually, Tuniversal from chat confirms, yeah, it, true flame, because I, I remember true flame. So that was just, yeah, so true flame is definitely uh, from Elder Scrolls 3. So yeah, these these babies are in Elder Scrolls 3, which it's mm-hmm. just, it's really nice. Yeah. Like it, You can it tell by the cool. low poly and the low... Uh, yeah <laughs> resolution not, textures that we're, this is we're, we're not Scrolls pixelated yeah, arena and daggerfall level not we're quite just that far those big polygonal yeah. like nice angular jaggies that's yeah. that's the type of this has polygons this it has sure like 12 polygons but it has it, polygons so this it, is hey, that's it's more than two polygons <laughs> the elder scrolls 3 yes uh, so the other item here is called the mask of almalexia it is a daedric ceremonial war mask also known as as a killing mask of the tribunal god Amalexia. It features yep. serpentine aesthetics fit, fitting on the goddess's title of the face snake queen. Okay. <laughs> it is one sure. of the masks of the tribunal, the other two being the mask of Sothasil, the mask and Vivix Ash mask. The the design of this one is actually really cool because yeah, it has these like looking. I mean it is not it's not a flattering design. This is not the kind no, of design it, you put on because you want to look attractive. Yeah, it, it's definitely not playing up the vanity aspect of her. Although, Mm-mm. I guess sort of is if you look at the way it's got the fangs and it's got these like Horns? almost like tusks. Yeah. Like coming up from a, and, it, and you at know, a very it, severe looking kind of angry, ugly face. Yes, it's very it's very angular. It's very, you know, scowled in uh, for the for the you know the angles of it but the thing about that which i guess you know maybe not from the vanity aspect of look how pretty i am however um it it fits with her mantra from later in her life Mm -hmm. where she becomes very warrior queen i'm you know i i need to slay my opponents i need to conquer i like this fits more with that. It's a very intimidating style of thing. It, it looks like a war mask as opposed to something that you would wear to court or to look pretty or whatever. Right. Or have that nurturing feel. This is like, I'm going to mess you up type of look. Yeah. No, it, it's very much a war mask. It's supposed to scare your enemies and yeah. and that kind of thing. I also like Which that very it has... syncs up to the end of her life. Yeah. I, I also like that it has the, like a copper kind of coloring where some of yeah. it has turned green. Yeah, which is pretty very cool weathered. Looks very weathered. Um, 
yeah, but that's that's it. That we've got we get two items. And these are the only two items, and that's it. I, I'm surprised that we didn't get more in ESO. I mean, I guess they're still around, and so yes, to like leave yeah. your items yeah, around not, for people. Like they are around at the time of ESO, unless and they will be around, unless they, they were justifying like, hey, we, this is something I crafted and was a gift to this person that person is no longer around so here i'm going to give it to you and now you've got some sort of mm-hmm. fancy, fancy item or something uh but that doesn't happen so yeah yeah yep that's it so that's yeah that's basically it for all Alexia without going into too many i mean it's, it's so hard to cover any of these without talking about well, the other and, ones and we've made or, references to the other ones so i mean they definitely tie into each other we may you know we uh, Again, Amalexia will be mentioned again when we talk about Vivek and Sothisil as well. Um, mm-hmm. So so there's definitely going to be some, you know, tie in between them because they're all very intertwined with each other. Um, but that's, you know, as much Amalexia specific stuff as we can probably pry apart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's I mean, that's the most of it. I mean, there's there's a little more details around, you know, some of these things. But I think that it's kind of the, the main overview. I mean, so, yeah, you can. <laughs> infinite amounts of details if you want but I, th- I think that's like a, a good summary of her life her interactions and her inevitable demise inevitable demise at your own hands mm-hmm. so nice so yeah yep. we're, we'll uh the next few weeks we'll cover vivek and sothasil and uh today is the eighth as we record this and then as we get closer to the end of the month we get closer to our patron episode so i think we've got two more weeks before the 29th which which is when we would do our patron episode which is conveniently not on christmas or anything like that so we'll still plan to do that yeah so we've got plenty of time to cover the other two and then who knows maybe we could talk about morrowind or something some of this stuff with our patrons which would be cool so uh, to wrap this up, Lotus, I, I know you did a thing this weekend. I did. Um, so it was it was crazy, dude. How did, it was? Why were there so many crazy. people in your charity stream? That was amazing. It, uh, yeah, it, it's amazing how much when you have like every outlet imaginable try to give you a hand. That's so <laughs> cool. How, how yeah. far that reaches. Um, so the event that we had been talking about and prepping up for uh, over the last uh, probably almost two months at this point was my yearly extra life drive. Uh, and this last weekend, we we had our big charity marathon where I um, my goal was to go for 20 hours and then hand the reins over to Ark, who would do another however long until he actually his goal was I'm going to stream until I finish making a video game from scratch, which <laughs> he's spoiler, still there. He's he still did. there. No, he's still like, going. I, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. could believe it. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the awesome. The joke was going to be Ark dies doing this. Like, because, <laughs> right. And and people were amazed. Like he made an uh, he made an extra life based platformer game. That's awesome. And, and it it came out great. It's it's really really impressive. Um, but huge shit out out. Uh, you know, to the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages who lended a huge hand. Um, we just looking at the various things and stuff like that. Um, we we had over. We we had close to forty thousand people who stopped by. Yeah, which is that that's the, that's the, a lot of digits during the day when I was able to like hang out. I had you up on the computer in the background, but yeah, the times but, I was able to sit down I, and engage. A lot of people do, and right. it's just like that's what helps us get there. Yeah, like, you were, not all these people are talking for twenty hours straight. Oh <laughs> sure, sure. You you were well over a thousand um, consecutive viewers every time I walked by yeah. the screen. Uh, like it yeah, was it, it was amazing. It was, what was the it, total? It, what did you guys end up? So in the end, um, our our first goal was three thousand dollars. Um, was was our goal, which is a solid goal. Like, which is a solid if, goal. If anybody who's done any of these charity streams <laughs> knows that that's that's a really solid goal. Like, that's yes, that's we've significant. had great success. We have a lot of people helping us. Um, and and I was like, this is a big goal that I would like us to try to get. Um, and then um, <laughs> we we smashed it. Before Ark even started, which <laughs> right. I was like, well, this is unexpected. Um, so Dave from uh, the the founder of the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages, who provided us a whole bunch of giveaways and stuff like that. Um, I'll give people updates on the tattoo that I get once I get an artist, because I actually am factoring uh, an Elder Scrolls portion to it at, when I get it done, because we hit that goal, which I thought was kind of like a joke goal. And I was like, OK, well, so much for that goal. That's gone. <laughs> like We've passed that by a mile. And now I have tattoos um, over my entire body. Yeah. <laughs> we hit so, so many goals. 
Dave uh, jumped in and was like, okay, well, this is an enormous success. You have so many people there and everybody is like super enthused. What if, um, cause he gave away like a bunch of Patreon tier rewards. He was like, what if we do the highest tier reward I've got pretty much, which is a custom laser engraved framed wooden map of a, any place you want in Tamriel, which is outrageous. Like if you look at the tier for that, Vivek's it, butt, can that be a location? Viv- is that, a, I mean, it's technically a location. It's technically a location. Uh, technically I was going to make a joke during wink, the, wink, during winner. your stream <laughs> about that, but then I decided not to. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> what is the weirdest and most inappropriate location? I, I just came up with Vivek's butt right now, but no. <laughs> Vivek's spear. spear. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't get more weird his, than that. His weapon? Yes. Sure. Wait a minute. Do you mean the same thing I do? <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 I think that'd probably win it. Um, Marin's Dagon's abs. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we put that up, and we, that was our. I was like, okay, it's so th- we we did a stretch goal. We're like, we'll do uh, another five hundred dollars. Like people have got to be about tapped out. Um, which spoiler alert, they weren't tapped out. We got that goal. We went over that goal, and then upon closing, the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages was like, well, we're gonna match the first three thousand. Wow. Um, so we ended up raising sixty five hundred and fifty seven dollars for extra life this week, this last weekend. That's awesome. That's awesome. Which is it is. So this was the tenth year that I've done it. This is the absolute most uh, that I've ever been part of a group that's raised. Um, so many people from uh, so many different communities, and a lot of you are from this community like there are so many people that are on the patreon with us or you know mm-hmm. send in stuff to the show thank you so much to everybody um it it's i, I literally like was struggling to comprehend <laughs> how much everybody was helping out um i'm glad so many people won really cool prizes as well um but yeah we we pretty much blew away any goal that we considered and like but by, by like miles, like it just, Oh yeah. More than double it, your, your anything right, you considered like it, even shooting for. That's like exactly. you, you pick a number and thinking like, maybe we can reach this. And maybe. that was exactly what I was thinking with our original one. And yeah. I was like, I don't, I'm handing the reins off to arc. And I was like, well, we're done. Like, I don't know. Just have <laughs> fun making a game. Like, I don't know what else we can do. Um, and Rob, along with everybody, uh, several other people in chat, um, we, we were coming up with some incentives on the fly just to make things interesting. Interesting. Um, Ark is sort of a bad friend because he egged everybody on. Um, I I destroyed my Elder Scrolls Online character uh, for charity, oh, um, man. which is is rough. I'm known for wearing glass armor and an ebony helmet. That's just it's a real shame. We always joke it's about real it. Shame People either think the armor looks real cool or it doesn't. Um, and it turned into a bidding war over every ten dollars. People could redesign part of my. Uh, gear uh-huh. and um i have to keep it until 2023 that was the ge- deal oh, i've got wow. to keep it for the rest of the year i can't change back so if i'm playing the game you're gonna see me looking like a ridiculous wacko are you running around and, like a big old clown now uh, oh i sure do i <laughs> sure do nice. um, and and what's more is the um <laughs> as gg brings up in chat the fact that um after a raid from uh, uh one of our friends avron um, sh- she, a huge Elmeria Dominion supporter, was like, "How much to make you switch alliances if we're just selling off all of your all of your dignity?" Yeah, I wasn't and, there when uh, this happened, but I was there after it happened, and I was lamenting. The this clips with are the rest horrifying. Of, <laughs> like, so of many people took so many awkward clips of me yeah. begrudgingly switching to. I also have to play as an Elmeria Dominion now until 2023. That goes right along with the costume thing, mm-hmm. and already i really appreciate the people who have found me in game and said way to have five yellow stars you traitor and i'm like oh god i'm gonna have to deal with this for a month (laughs) because it keeps your rank in the so So, i am now a grand overlord in my most despised like oh no so you know it uh, super fun time i really appreciate it we played some dagger fall on stream for people uh, which got real weird, mm-hmm. but everybody mm-hmm. kept me awake so much. 
I actually ended up running long during Daggerfall. Like we ended up going for over 21 hours. <laughs> nice. Um, just because it was fun and everybody was having a good time. So it, again, huge thank you to all of you who who dropped by and supported however you did monetarily spreading the word just hanging out to keep me from getting bored and falling asleep um this was definitely the best way i could have thought to celebrate a 10th 10th anniversary of tenth doing anniversary. this charity thing yeah 10th anniversary yeah congratulations that's awesome and it's, yeah. it's such a good cause oh, so absolutely man that feels that feels good and everybody who contributed everybody who joined and and helped out yeah. everybody should feel awesome about that because that's yes that is huge. even if you're just hanging out a lot of a lot of the time it's hard to express you might not realize from the other side of this how much that actually just helps absolutely yeah, <laughs> to keep you yes. focused on doing what you're doing as right. opposed to like drifting off and getting bored and whatever and so. help discovery of the ch- of the stream it, because yes. the more people in the channel the more easy it is for people to find it yeah. because it gets those pushed up on those numbers lists and, don't happen without yeah. people doing that absolutely like, all of it is helpful and and even exactly. just on a personal level like having people join your stream and like chime in feels good you feel like oh people yeah. like, people like it, me people like what i'm doing they want to support yeah. what i'm doing they they care you know like all yep. of that adds up and is is awesome so yeah so, such an awesome community thank you everybody who yes helped out thank you that. very much and thank you lotus for taking the time to do this and an arc hey I'm, I'm happy to act like a jackass if it does some good <laughs> for 21 hours straight man that's not that's not easy especially as you get older 10 years ago yeah, that was a no, lot easier I definitely, <laughs> I definitely feel it from year one when i did this a lot more <laughs> yeah yeah it's it changes as you get older um well that's awesome anything else coming up you want to share um, no, I was going to say we just recorded our, our, uh, episode of tales last night. Actually, we had Dave, um, from the elder scrolls, uh, unofficial elder scrolls pages, join us to kind of do a year in review of not only our charity drive, but also the unofficial elder scrolls pages, since we're combined with them. I mean, we use them here all the time and this is a sister show of tales and tales is the unofficial. Elder. It's just one big homogenized thing where we all kind of just work together. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So he came on and uh, chatted with us for a while. So, it, you know, we, we did that. And then hopefully this weekend I will have a little time because I would actually like to play some more uh, classics. Uh, I just posted, I, I clipped it up and posted the mm, portion of Daggerfall we played during Extra Life to my YouTube if you're interested in the in the playthroughs and uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to add another bit to it as we have been on a very weird Dark Brotherhood mission where apparently all the Dark Brotherhood are saber cats in in, in Daggerfall yeah i don't know I we'll don't, have to look that up maybe, that, maybe we need no to do an episode on, on why that is uh yeah th- we're going we're delving back to the deep stuff that's pretty deep oh boy <laughs> all right well awesome awesome good yeah go check out that stuff um all my stuff's at robotsradio.net so if you're into this show you want to learn more about fallout or any of the other you know, lord of the rings any other shows i do go check them out robotsradio.net also a bunch of t-shirts on sale go grab a t-shirt get yourself a, a holiday present um <laughs> why not Hermes Mora? Uh, <laughs> but uh, I haven't been streaming as much. I apologize for that. I've been busy with other things. So um, it might not be something I can get back to right, right away with the game streams in the afternoons. But, you know, I always go through these phases where I, I, I can do it for a while and then other stuff comes up and I'm like, I just I'm missing too many of these. So who knows? Maybe I'll get back to streaming at some point. It's always it's always just a fun. Hey, let's hang out with the community kind of thing. So uh no big no big loss i guess it's just i'll do it when i can um so uh yeah i think that does it for this episode everybody thank you for tuning in thank you for being here chat everybody in chat i love all the comments and things and we will be back next week on thursday night again so stay safe out there we'll see you next time bye everybody have a good one Thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear from you. You can reach me on Twitter at robots underscore radio or Lotus of Doom at Lotus of Doom. Also, you can join us on the Robots Radio Discord channel. You can easily just search Robots Radio Discord on Google or check the description underneath the podcast. Also, this podcast is recorded live every week on Thursday nights 
9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on the Robots Radio channels on Twitch, YouTube, and on Facebook. So just search Robots Radio on any of those platforms. Come join us. We'd love to chat with you while we record the show or before or after. Either way, just come hang out with us. And if you're looking for more information about my shows and the shows on the Robots Radio Network, go to robotsradio.net for all the information about all the shows on the network, including the Robots Radio Rocket Club, where I help both new and existing podcasters to grow their shows, build their audiences, and create the best podcast they possibly can. All of that at robotsradio.net. We'll see you next time.